Not surprisingly, the United States government has been trying to regulate and get their hands on cryptocurrency as well. They started by tracking your cryptocurrency transactions, that way they could tax your cryptocurrency profits. You also have the feds cracking down on money laundering and the SEC wants to track your transactions on exchanges, that way they can see how much money you're making. But now the United States government is trying to take it one step further by doing exactly what the Greeks did making a Trojan horse. The SEC just proposed a 654 page bill which some are calling a Trojan horse because they think that the goal of this bill is to regulate cryptocurrency and DeFi even though it doesn't mention cryptocurrency or DeFi. If it goes through this proposal would give the government a lot more power when it comes to regulating cryptocurrency and the whole decentralized finance space. Now it really shouldn't be surprising for anybody that the government wants to regulate cryptocurrency. President Biden has been very vocal about why he wants to regulate the cryptocurrency and stable coins because he says that it is a issue of national security which is why the government needs to be more involved. The reason people especially young people have been adopting cryptocurrency is because they're sick and tired of the system. The government has been creating inflation for decades now and this inflation makes people poorer. It makes the average person poorer because it dilutes the value of a dollar which makes everything else more expensive and so if you're wealthy and rich and you own all the assets it benefits you but if you don't then you're the one that has to pay the price because now your savings don't stretch as far, your paycheck doesn't stretch as far, and so you effectively become poorer. That's why I've seen so many people get passionate behind cryptocurrency because it offers a potential solution to this problem. Crypto is the people's movement of money because now it is a bottom-up movement where people are changing which currency they want to use. They're starting to buy cryptocurrency and adopt it as their own currency without having the top, the government, tell you how to use your money. Now, of course, it comes with its own fair share of risk. I mean, it's speculative. You don't have the backing and support of the United States government, and so that's why you We've seen a lot of volatility and we don't know what's going to happen with cryptocurrency because of that. But people are very hopeful about what could come with Bitcoin, cryptocurrency and the entire blockchain technology which is why you've seen so many young people move their money to cryptocurrency. And this is creating almost a digital war between what the people want and what governments want for the people. As more and more countries around the world are creating regulations on cryptocurrency to supposedly protect consumers, the people are getting angry and it puts more pressure on the United States government to create their own regulations. So while it shouldn't be surprising that the United States government wants to regulate cryptocurrency even more heavily, a lot of investors are worried because anytime you hear more talks about the government regulating cryptocurrency, you start to see a lot more volatility in crypto and Bitcoin tends to fall. And these new regulations that the SEC is proposing would give the government a much stronger hand on all things crypto and blockchain. That's why Forbes says that the SEC is trying to quote, ambush the crypto markets with their new Trojan horse regulations. So let's talk about this. I want to talk about what this Trojan horse proposal is and how likely it is to pass and what's going to come in the future. The SEC, which is short for the Securities and Exchange Commission, proposed a 654 page document which says that they should be able to regulate something called TMP, Treasury Markets Platforms, if they use alternative trading systems. That is a mouthful and it took me like 10 tries to get that. So let's dissect what this means, starting with the TNP. What is a treasury markets platform? A treasury markets platform, according to the SEC's press release, is anything that trades a government security or a government treasury. When people talk about government treasuries, they're usually talking about government bonds, treasury bonds. And when people talk about government securities, these are investments. So what could be a government security? Well, dollars. Let me just read you the Investopedia definition. The most common types of government securities are those issued by the U.S. Treasury in the form of Treasury bonds, bills, and notes. So the worry that people have is if you have an alternative trading system, which is pretty much anything that allows you to trade one thing for another, and you trade something where it involves money of any way, then this could be regulated by the United States government and the Securities and Exchange Commission. That's why you have some people like Commissioner Hester Pierce who are very upset. He's saying that this proposal would give the SEC essentially an invisibility cloak where they could come in and have a backdoor access into all cryptocurrency. That way they could regulate it and potentially destroy the DeFi industry as we know it. To understand what that means, you have to understand how DeFi, decentralized finance, works. If you wanted to go out and buy Bitcoin for the first time, you'd have to go and open an account with an exchange. Maybe use Coinbase, BlockFi, Gemini, Kraken. You'd open an account with one of these exchanges and then you would be able to now buy Bitcoin. Coinbase, BlockFi, Gemini, and Kraken are all centralized exchanges because they're controlled by a central agency. Coinbase is controlled by Coinbase, BlockFi is controlled by BlockFi, Gemini is controlled by Gemini, and Kraken is controlled by, well, Kraken. 
Biden. The government has already created regulations to work with centralized exchanges to track transactions. That way the government knows how much money you're making off of these exchanges. But then you have a whole different industry, a whole industry of decentralized exchanges that do not have a central controlling agency or a central controlling company. The goal of a decentralized exchange is to create a place where now you can exchange different cryptocurrencies without having to go through a company or an agency that's controlled by one person. If you've never been exposed to DeFi before, this can be a confusing concept to first understand because everything that we see, feel, and touch is pretty much centralized. So let me give you an example. If you just landed in the LA airport and you wanted to get a ride to the new home that you're renting, what would you do? Well, if you wanted to get there right now, you'd probably just call an Uber. But calling an Uber would be going through a centralized platform because Uber is controlled by Uber. But if there was a decentralized way to do that, that would mean that you can go directly to the driver. That would save fees, that would save costs and reduce friction and allow you to work directly with your provider. And now you have a driver to get you to the house. And now if you wanted to rent this house right now, you'd have to go through Airbnb. But if you didn't go through Airbnb, if there was a decentralized version of that, now you'd rent the home directly from the homeowner. That way you don't have to worry about paying different management fees. The advantage of decentralized finance to people is you have more control because now you don't have to go through a third party agency so you can work directly with somebody else and so you have less fees and more control. We haven't seen major applications of this type of decentralized finance yet, but it's starting to happen. We're starting to see it enter the music space because some creators and artists don't like going through Spotify and Apple Music because they don't feel like they're getting a big enough cut. So there's been some innovation there, but so far the most widely adopted tool are decentralized cryptocurrency exchanges, something like Uniswap, because this is a place where you can convert one cryptocurrency to another without having to go through one of the centralized exchanges. The reason why people really like these decentralized exchanges is because it can be almost anonymous. Now, whether you like centralized exchanges or decentralized exchanges, it's really a matter of personal preference. By the way, if you want to start investing your money in cryptocurrency and you want to see how you can earn interest on your cryptocurrency or your stable coins, you can check out our sponsor BlockFi, which lets you do that. And they offer some of the best interest rates on their stable coins. If you want to learn more, I'll put the link in the description below. But the whole goal of DeFi is to bring the power back to the users and customers of a platform because now you are not regulated by a central agency, a central authority, or a central company. Now you are in control, you get to pick your own rules, and you get to work directly with the people that you want to work with. That's why this new proposal is so concerning to people in the cryptocurrency and blockchain space because it could give the government a lot more power to regulate things like decentralized finance because it's supposed to be decentralized, but if it's regulated and controlled by the government, then it's not so decentralized. Now obviously the government's going to have their own reasons as to why they would want to regulate DeFi. On one hand, they would say that they want to do it to protect consumers, so consumers Consumers don't get screwed over by scams and other people like that. But then there's also the monetary side because the government doesn't want to miss out on any potential tax dollars that could be moving through decentralized finance exchanges that they don't see. Now, as an attorney, I got to tell you this. If you make a profitable exchange on a decentralized platform, it might be anonymous, but you're still liable for those taxes. So if you have a lot of people that are trading cryptocurrencies for a profit on these decentralized exchanges, and because they think it's anonymous, they don't have to report their taxes taxes, the government feels like they're missing out on a big chunk of tax dollars. They didn't say this because that proposal by the SEC didn't say a thing about cryptocurrency because they didn't want to sound up any alarms because if they said that they want to regulate cryptocurrency and they want to control DeFi, people would panic, people would freak out, and it'd be much harder for them to get it passed. But if they use these code words, if they use a Trojan horse, then it's an easier way for them to get through, through a back door. So this is just me speculating and thinking out loud, but you have to think that the government wants to find any tax dollars that they can. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the shorter clip from the longer videos, here's another clip that I think you'll love. And if you're interested in learning more about how to invest your money in the stock market, our team put together an amazing guide that'll walk you through how to invest your money in the stock market. This guide is completely free when you sign up for a daily newsletter. So if you want to read this guide, all you got to do is click that button right over there. Thank you for watching. And as always, keep hustling.